Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have an idea episode, and we're going to be talking about a topic that that I think is going to bring a lot of value to everyone. It's about how a simple video content strategy can help showcase your expertise, get more leads, and boost your SEO. And to help us walk through that, I brought in Jeff Long. And as the owner of True Focus Media, Jeff helps industrial manufacturing companies be more efficient and effective in their marketing, sales, and training. Since he started a company in 2003, Jeff has worked with large international companies as well as small job shops. And we know we love those, those companies that, on Eco Ask Why. So whether it's creating custom websites to sell more effectively, producing 3D virtual reality videos, building custom e-learning systems, or using his innovative video value bomb strategy, he's always looking for ways that companies can be more effective in an ever-changing environment. So welcome, Jeff. Thanks so much for having me on, Chris. I'm really excited to be on the show today. Oh, I'm I'm thrilled to have you here. You're definitely the expert in this area. I, I love following you on LinkedIn, and definitely for the listeners out there, check out the show notes. Get get connected with Jeff. He's constantly bringing just wonderful content that's going to help you get better. So, Jeff, there may be manufacturers out there listening that are just not familiar with, at all when you say video content strategy. So, how would you define that to to make it resonate in their world? Yeah, that's that's a great question, uh, and I come from from all of this from a like how do we help and serve our ideal customer, right? And so, I mean, just if you look at yourself as well as the the general population, uh, we all are searching twenty four seven for for products for solutions, and this is still true in the manufacturing space, right? It's not any different. Um, I recently read a stat, I think it was by SEO Insights, that said. 70% of buyers look online and do their full research before reaching out to a sales rep. And that's only going to get um, more. In fact, I just uh, yesterday was reading how uh, digital natives, so I don't know the exact age range mm -hmm. um, of that, are now there's more of them than us kind of analog natives, right? So as, as the millennials and, and under uh, get older, they expect digital, they expect to do their research online. So when I say a video content strategy, right? All I mean is, do you as your company, do you have helpful information to answer the questions that your ideal customer is searching for, right? And, right. and since video is, um, most of us are kind of too lazy to read these days, uh, video is really important to do that. Short, simple videos. And we'll kind of talk about maybe what that look, could look like in, in a little bit, but that's really all I'm talking about is giving helpful information, typically through video, but not only through video. I'm podcasts are another fantastic way as well as article. I mean, people learn in, a, in different ways. We need to uh, meet them in different ways. Right. You know, Jeff, when you, when you started out, you talked about that 70%. Now, Clarify that for me. Seventy percent are doing what before and, and, and using video as they evaluate their strategy. Uh, so seventy percent of buyers, and this is in a B two B space, okay. right? So seventy percent of buyers are looking online. They're researching a solution to their problem, even before reaching out to a sales rep. Got it. Right. So in a manufacturing space, um, you know your competitors are, you know, have content out there that's meeting a need. So my question is, you know, do, does your company have that same uh, amount of content, whether it's articles or podcasts or videos, webinars? I mean, there's a, a breadth of different types of content out there that can be made. No doubt. No doubt. And I'm sure that number is, is doing nothing but growing in, in you know, year, sure. year over year, right? It's just, yeah, it has yeah. to be keep going up. So right. I know when we talked, you dropped a, a little nugget on me that that caught my, caught my eye called video value bombs. And- I'm really curious about that. Maybe break that down for our listeners. Yeah. So uh, my background, you know, like the bio said, it's it's in marketing for manufacturers. Uh, but my parents are both uh, teachers, so I love to to look at marketing and sales from a how can we teach and help people, right? It's not about like how can we like knock down doors and and cold call and and pitch people and like force them to buy our stuff. Cause that never works, especially long-term, right? Nobody wants to buy from that type of person. Right. So, um, and, and knowing that people are searching 24 seven. So I always say content marketing is key, but video content 
is king. You know, uh, people, again, I say this a lot, people are too lazy to, to, to read. They usually would rather listen or watch. And so because of that, I, I developed this strategy called video value bombs. And uh, when I started my company in 2003, most companies, when they think of video, they think first, hey, we need to make a, a big like company profile video, right? Where we tell our story, our history. Hey, we have great products, great people, great service. And that's fine. I think there's a time and a place, but I don't know that has the ROI that um, answering frequently asked questions or uh, demonstrating your products, maybe it's setup, safety, um, install, whatever that is. Like those have more value because they're customer centric. Mm -hmm. So video value bombs takes this customer first approach. And uh, the premise is, uh, at least when I do it, it's give us 30 minutes and we'll you give you a month's worth of sales and marketing content. So I can give you the three-step process if you want sure. of what we do. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, you know, I try to make things simple. You know, again, my parents are teachers. I try to boil things down to simple things. I, I try not to even talk in industry jargon, right? You know, part of our business is website design and development, very technical. I don't like trying to confuse people. I like keeping things simple. So this video value bombs is three, three steps. Number one, it's a content roadmap. I find when, when most companies are looking to create content, they might have a good idea. Hey, we want to tackle this and this, but I don't know that they have a, a roadmap in place of where they want to start, where they want to go both, you know, soon and in the future. Right. Uh, and so we help them, you know, here's every month where we want to go. Here are the, some of the subject matter experts we might want to interview because as you know, Chris, I mean, there's different, um, um, buying decision makers or, or people, even influencers that influence the, the, the decision makers, we want to you know, hit each one of those, right? So it might be an executive we want to target or an engineer or marketing or sales or whatever. Right. We have a content roadmap is step number one. And so every month we're interviewing different uh, people. Uh, when we interview them, we do it through video and we can either do it in person, which we've done, you know, a lot, or we can actually do it through what you and I are doing right now, which is virtually, right? Through Zoom, we have a, a different platform that, that has some benefits. And then we cut that interview up uh, into these video value bombs. So we're asking specific questions that their target audience wants to know. And then we chop those into video value bombs. So that's kind of step one. Step two is we multiply that content. So once we have these short videos, we can write articles. Uh, from those that are SEO uh, packed, you know, with SEO goodness. Uh, we can pull out different quotes that the person has. So you can put those quotes on your um, uh, brochures or your website or your social or your, you know, all these different places. And then step three is content distribution. And this is where we supercharge things because we have a list of, I don't know, probably 40 or more different places that we can post and repost this content. Uh, videos, articles, all this stuff every single month. So imagine this content snowball getting bigger and bigger as it rolls down the hill every right. single month. And it becomes this big library of, of customer centric content. And that, so that's the video value bombs strategy, the three-step process. And that's beautiful because so many times people think maybe it's a one and done deal. No, no, it's not one and done. You, right. you, you can yeah. use this so many different ways. And when you were walking through that, the content roadmap, the, the multiplying the content, the distribution, I love video is king. Uh, I think that's a t-shirt, Jeff. You need to, you need to go <laughs> ahead go. and make that happen. Content, con, content is key. Video is king. That's a, that's definitely a t-shirt or, or coffee love mug. It. But I was thinking for manufacturers, I read a book one time. If I'm making these little video value bombs like you're talking about, the the book was called They Ask You Answer. And it's all about being specific to what people are are coming to your site to try to yes. learn about. And, and it's because to your point, the, the, the over encompassing ch all about me video, this is what the company does. That probably has a, a place and a time, but that's not what people are searching for. Right. I mean, they're, they're trying to answer a problem. And it sounds like the video value bombs really focuses on that. 
It does. Yeah. It's funny. Uh, you're the second person this week that has mentioned that book. Uh, and so I actually downloaded it on my phone and uh, I, I plan on starting it uh, pretty soon because I've, I've heard rave reviews about it. So yeah, that's, that's funny. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great stuff. I th it really aligns to what you're doing here. And, and maybe yeah. the, the manufacturers out there that are listening, Jeff, they're intimidated. Maybe they're scared. They don't know how to start a map like this. Do you have any tips that come to mind when you start thinking about walking down this video content road? Yeah. So some of the, um, some of the questions I ask when we have some of these uh, kickoff meetings where we create this roadmap, because part of it is like, I have a, a penciled in roadmap, but obviously the company needs to like, um, uh, formulated or, or, or bend it to their needs, right? It's not a, a one size fits all. So here's some of the questions I typically ask a company. It's like, okay, what, what are some things your ideal customer wants to know, right? What questions are they asking? So who, who knows those questions? Well, maybe your salespeople, your customer service, obviously your executives, some of your engineers. So there's different people in the company, even talk to shipping and receiving or other departments where maybe they get some calls or complaints that you might not necessarily think about first, mm -hmm. but they have some inside information uh, that you can um, leverage or you can uh, take advantage of in a good way, of course. So that's one, one question. I know there are several in there. Um, another is, you know, who are the decision makers and internal influencers and then create content for them, right? So think about your ideal customer and I'm sure it's customers, right? It's different buckets. Maybe you serve different industries or there's, you know, different applications or I, I get that, especially in manufacturing, there's channel partners and a lot of different um, ways to, to get to market. Mm -hmm. So just be thinking of um, even what is our, thinking of the 80-20 rule, which says what 20% of your products or customers result in 80% of your revenue, uh, right. something like that. So 80-20. So what are the 20% of our customers that bring in 80% of our revenue and let's create content for that customer base. Cause, cause it can be overwhelming, Chris, right? It's like, oh man, we have all these products and applications and industries and uh, I mean, my head swims uh, just thinking about that. So let's keep it simple. You could even start with the top 10%, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right. Keep, it, keep it simple and, and commit to a, a timeline, right? Whether it's a year um, I mean, I, I would think many months would be appropriate. Like you said a couple minutes ago, it, it's not a one and done thing. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it, I just had a, I was working with a company uh, just the other day and he said, they have an internal uh, uh, kind of video setup like you do. And he said, you know, content um, are, it's insatiable. You know, our customers want to know both high level, both detailed in the weeds and we need to create content for that. So, right. but start simple, start okay. simple. And I love it because, you know, getting clear on the questions up front, you know, that's, that's really speaking to your value proposition and where, where you can really help those people. But you're all over identifying the, I, I call it the, your target audience and making sure yeah, you're exactly. speaking to them directly. And I, I personally, I create avatars in my brain yeah. and that's, you know, I, I'll give them a name and a background and I'm speaking to that, that avatar, right? Because if I, yeah. if I feel like if I'm serving that person, you know, that's, then I'm, then I'm hitting the mark there. That's brilliant. Yes, absolutely. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, we have a studio. It's a very makeshift studio here at EcoSY. For a manufacturer out there, they may not have a studio. So if they want to get started, you know, mm -hmm. is it as simple as a webcam? Or what, what really do they need to get going? Yeah, I think um, I think in today's age with, with COVID and all that, I think it's um, shown us that we can do a lot with a little, right? I mean, uh, you know, personally, our company owns, I don't know how many tens of thousands of dollars worth of video equipment. So I'm not saying that, that the, the listener needs to invest, you know, $50,000 or whatever for that. I mean, thankfully, a webcam, and I would recommend, like I have a Logitech Brio, and it's a 4K, that's like the resolution webcam, right? So, okay. um, you know, start there with a, a web camera. Typically, your camera in your computer or laptop, it's or phone, it's fine, but it's not great, right? Right. So that's why I think these Logitech webcams are really good. And then a, an external microphone, like I have, um, I don't want to touch it because it'll make noise. I have an Audio Technica ACR2100, I think. Mm -hmm. I, and, and, and so um, those two alone might cost $200. I, I kind of forget, let's say two or $300. Right. 
And you know, you, you kind of have like a, a studio right there. So start simple. And then as you get some traction, uh, find out even also, is there anybody internally that's excited about creating content? Right? Do you have a millennial or somebody that's already used to consuming video content? Maybe they're excited about creating it. Give that project to him or her and and let them run with it. Yeah, I was funny because I was talking to someone the other day in our company, pretty high up, and when I mentioned going on video, he, he turned white. I mean, I thought he was going to faint because it's not for everyone. See, so maybe sure. that's a great point. See if there are already people internally that you can identify that want to jump in and take that lead. Yeah. Well, and here, so that's really interesting because, oh man, I could tell some, some stories about high level executives, huge uh, companies, you turn on that camera and they just, yeah, they melt. And it's like, where did this confident, amazing, good looking person go? They're like in a puddle right now. Um, but it is scary. It's, it it, it can be scary for me. I'll, I'll be honest. I don't love being on camera, uh, especially when you have lights and camera and production and people all staring at you, like you, you feel the pressure, but Here's a trick that I use to um, calm myself down and make it easier. Okay. Let's go back to teaching, right? Again, my parents are teachers, so I, I go back to that. I find that when I, inv- and you mentioned you know, like avatars, you've named them. When I think in my head, all right, I'm going to teach two people right now. And it happens to be on camera. And all I'm going to, I'm just going to talk to Chris here, right? So I'm going to teach Chris a couple of things that, at least for me, that lowers my pressure it makes it more conversational. I think with with content marketing or co- you know content videos, it's more about the content than the nailing every word correctly, right? Right. So you and I, I'm sure, have said some um, some ahs. We're not perfect. We're not you know we're just normal people, and that's a good thing. I, I think people want authenticity yep. over like polished to perfection. I, I think there's a time and a place for some of that, you know. But I think uh, some of these uh, video pieces can be more personal than polished to perfection. I agree. The raw is where it's at. I mean, there's yeah. several of the podcasts I listen to. I mean, one of them, even yesterday when I was running, there was a train that came by and they didn't edit that out, right? They were just like, well, right. welcome to the train to this podcast. You know, they just they just went with it because I think the rawness, you know, that shows it's real and you're not trying yeah. to, 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 you know, to be something that you're not. Great advice though. Yeah. Love that. Now, how about, you know, the headwinds? Because you have manufacturers, they start thinking about this. You know, there's going to be the person out there just just, just really pushing back. How can they get past that? Just know people are already searching online. People are already consuming content. Mm -hmm. So do you want to be in front of that? Or do you want to be at the tail end trying to play catch up in a couple of years? So I think on a business level, and I get it, right? It is a time cost whatever, um, investment. Okay. Well, I mean, but the, the benefit is you can, you can leverage this content to do more with less. Right. And so as it's harder and harder to hire good people, you can automate some of your sales and marketing with this. I'm not saying it'll replace people by any stretch. That's, that's never going to happen, but my word, I mean, if you could duplicate your sales team by, interviewing them or getting them on video and, and having them create content. Imagine, I mean, we did this, uh, Stober Drives is a, a, a gearbox manufacturer in Kentucky. Mm-hmm. And we did this strategy before COVID, like uh, months be- three months before COVID. As we were rolling out content, obviously everything shuts down. All of their salespeople can't travel. But now because we had these video value bombs and all this content we're creating, their salespeople had... Um, uh, an in or a way to serve their audience, serve their customers before a sales call, during and after. So it's kind of an easy in because it wasn't, again, it's not a hard sales pitch. It's, hey, people have these common questions. You might want to check out these two or three videos. Right. You're in. That's, that is, that's a touchdown right there. Now, now, speak, yeah. now, now managers, we know how you know the, the bean counters, they like to, to know the metrics. So yeah. speak to that. Are there any leading indicators, any KPIs, you know, maybe, maybe ROI, but what's, what, what do you put out and measure to actually say, Hey, this is working. This is why we're doing this. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. And, and at least for this strategy, we're, we're targeting all parts of the buyer's journey, okay. right? So, right. so people that might not even know about your company, what do they need to know? Mm-hmm. Uh, versus 
at the tail end, at the bottom of the funnel, you know, some people call it, is a happy customer. What do they need to know and experience and all that? So there's different people or, or different steps in that journey that we need to, to, to highlight. So some of those things, it, I'll be honest, it is hard to, to know KPIs for every step along the way. But let's talk about some KPIs. So, like, um, obviously, views is is a big thing, right? So, whether it's on your website or YouTube, social media, some of those different platforms have uh, analytics and different things. You can look at views. You can look at demographics. Uh, we have a custom video player where, uh, at the end of or anywhere in the video, we can have a form pop up on the video. So, like with Stober Drives, at the end of their videos, they say something like. Um, if you enjoyed this content, check out our free guide below. And they have some really high quality case studies. Um, I forget what all they have, checklists, you know, things like that. So now we know exactly who is watching these videos. It's not a casual viewer like, wow, we had a thousand people watch this. We don't know who they are. Yeah. Now we know, wow, this person works at this company. They're interested in this topic and want to download this thing holy moly, now we have a lead, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something uh, to consider, as well as interactions. I mean, that's kind of gold. I mean, uh, I, I know a lot of people are ad, uh, of, of adverse, is that the word I'm looking for, to social media or different things. I, I kind of am too, to be honest. I'm a marketer. And I'm like, I'm in LinkedIn and YouTube, but I'm not like, you know, I don't live there. Uh, but yet, people are there. Your, your ideal customer is there. So you should be there. Right. So you can, you can measure some different interactions. Um, and then thinking long-term, like uh, increased visibility. I mean, you know, Chris, you know, from the, this podcast, uh, that, that gets you, that, it, that showcases your expertise in a way that, I mean, before podcasts and videos was almost impossible. Right. So it, I've seen content creators uh, in fact, our buddy Jay Call uh, was just, um, I don't know if nominated is the right word, but he was just uh, made a LinkedIn contributor. He's the only guy in manufacturing because all the content he's creating. I mean, for those of you that are uh, connected to the uh, millennial, the manufacturing millennial the guy puts out tons of content, doing an amazing job. And LinkedIn saw that, said, hey, we want to you know promote you. You promote us. I mean, oh, my word. Yeah. Um, so it... Yeah, some of it is not a a one for one tangible thing, but like I, I mean, I'm sure you could speak to the podcast and how that's opened doors and 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 done wonders. Um, so there, there's a lot of opportunities there for both actual data, uh, 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 KPI data, as well as the intangibles. Exactly, and I think one of the biggest intangibles is if you don't lean into this now, it's going to be too late because yeah. the way the buying the whole buyer's journey. Cause I relate this to the buyer's journey. Like you're talking about, you have to be there from the lead to, to, you know, to the, to the yeah. PO. Right. And then, right. and, 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 and past the PO to the implementation. I mean, you, you have to be creating content that's going to help because you can't be there 24 seven for your customers the way you want to, but your video content right. can. And, yeah. You know, and by the way, hats off to Jake. I, I saw that the other day. He's been on this show. You know, we really support what he's doing, yeah. manufacturing millennial. And I think he's just a great voice for us. So excited to see what he does there too, man. So yeah, you know, great, great metrics and KPIs, the things to think about from from views to the social to the leads, all that stuff. And for the manufacturers out there, who do you find when you're when you're working with these plants? Who are you working with? Because I'm trying to get an idea of like who owns this from the end user standpoint, right? Uh, who owns like the, the the viewer? Is that what you're saying? Well, or well, like who would you find as like the the primary one that's invested in? Hey, I want to take this on. I want to be, you know, working in you know in front of the camera, doing the content, coming up with the oh, strategy, sure. things like that. I just didn't know from a manufacturing standpoint. We talk to a lot of engineers. I'm yeah. not picturing engineering doing this, but I could be wrong. So I just, just curious who you find yourself working with. So typically my point of contact is the marketing uh, department, right? So, um, so that's typically who kind of internally is my point of contact. But again, I think it's key to, to interview different subject matter experts. So it could be the engineers. Right. And I mean, I've been doing this almost 20 years. I started the company in 2003. I love coaching people and helping them get more confident 
uh, on camera and delivering their message. So, you know, there's little tweaks, you know, I can kind of help them with. And these video value bombs, we're talking like short videos, mm -hmm. right? We're, you know, two to three minutes. We're not talking, you know, 20, 30, you know, epic dialogue things where they're, you know, rambling on. I think there's, there's a time and a place for that, but I think probably that's more further down in the sales cycle where you do want a one-on-one -on -one call, uh, Zoom call, something like that in person, uh, you know, video can't take the place of, of that. Uh, so that's typically the, the point of contact is marketing. And then we interview different people in the company and even customers too, right? We could interview uh, like case studies is, yep. is an untapped um, potential for different video products. I love it. I love it. We're actually working on one of those right now, you know, nice. trying to take a case study and, and turning it into multiple podcasts, which we, I think yeah. now we need to turn those into multiple video value bombs, right? I mean, right. It just, it just, exactly. A, it, it makes sense. So Jeff, because I, they're bragging about you where you don't, I mean, you don't have to brag about yourself, you right, know, right. It's a, it's a, which is gold. It, yep. That's right. And it sticks to my rule of being humble always. So there you go. Right. It works, it works right. out. Yeah. Now I've learned a ton. I, I know our listeners have, this has been wonderful, Jeff. We, we call it eco S Y cause I always try to wrap up with the why. And for that manufacturer out there, you know, give them the answer here. Why is having that video content strategy so key? to be being successful for, for manufacturing in the future? Yeah, that's a great question. I think, I think it kind of summarizes a lot of what we said, meaning, you know, people are already searching online, especially as uh, millennials and stuff get older, they're demanding it, but also we non-millennials are demanding it. Uh, it, it serves, it teaches, it kind of fills a lot of the buckets that marketing sales, you know, even the bean counters you mentioned, you know, if, if we can help marketing and sales, I mean, that, that fills uh, their buckets as well. So to me, it's a, a no brainer or, or a win-win. And I know companies like, like, I'm not trying to say, Hey, only Jeff Long and true focus media can do this. You guys are obviously doing an amazing job at this as well as other manufacturers are doing some of this internally. So I, I applaud you. Uh, Chris and your company. So if, if companies can do this internally, go for it. If they want to hire an expert that already has a plan, you know, look for somebody like me or others that, that are doing this. But either way, I, I encourage a listener to get started. No doubt. No doubt. And I, and I encourage the listeners connect with Jeff. I mean, at True Focus Media, they have, they have the strategy. He laid it out for you here. The video value bombs work. Check out the show notes. We'll have links to get to Jeff, to True Focus, to everything that you can find there. And Jeff, this has been a lot of fun. So thank you so much for taking the time and for sharing your expertise today. Thanks so much for having me on the show today. I've really enjoyed the conversation and uh, being on today. Yes, sir. You have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to Eco Ask Why. This show is supported ad-free by Electrical Equipment Company. ECO is redefining the expectations of an electrical distributor by placing people and ideas before products. Please subscribe and share with your colleagues and friends. Also, leave comments, feedback, and any new topics that you would like to hear. To learn more or to share your insights, visit ecosy.com. That's E-E-C-O-A-S-K-S-W-H-Y.com.